Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we have a Star Wars game that's getting delayed for another year. And are we getting close to that Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard? We have those topics to cover and more, but before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so we can keep you up to date with all the latest gaming news. Now let's get started. So if you remember back to February of 2021, we had the announcement of this arena style game, Star Wars Hunters, and that it was coming to mobile and to Switch. Well, it was supposed to come out soon after that announcement, and then it got delayed until 2022. Well, we have this recent announcement here from the official Twitter account, and I'm not going to read the entire thing here, but I will highlight this bold area in the middle. We invite all players to join us on Vespria when Star Wars Hunters launches in 2023 on Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android devices. So the game's been delayed again until 2023, and there was no specific date given. But what's interesting is that the game has already gotten a soft launch in some territories on mobile, and it is continuing to get regular updates with new content. So I'm not sure when we're going to see this game here stateside and the company doesn't seem to be in much of a hurry. It seems like they could do a soft launch here in the US, but maybe they're just trying to keep their numbers down so they can see how the server load goes. Next, we've seen a lot of acquisitions finish recently, like for example the acquisition of Bungie by Sony. And if you're like me, you're kind of wondering how far along is the Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard coming along. Well, we have this headline here from VGC. Microsoft's Activision buyout could be approved by the FTC as soon as next month. Now for these mergers to complete, there's a lot of information that has to be given to the FTC to process. And in this article it adds, and according to paywalled merger news provider Deal Reporter via Seeking Alpha, Microsoft has now provided the FTC with the information it was looking for. As noted by the FTC's own guidance, this means the body now has 30 days to challenge the acquisition, otherwise the deal can continue. Now Microsoft is not the only one that needs to give information to the FTC. The article goes on to say it's not yet clear whether Activision has provided its share of the requested information yet. If not, the 30-day window will presumably only start when it does. Once the FTC has received the information from both companies, there are three potential outcomes. The FTC could either close the investigation and let the merger proceed unchallenged, negotiate with the companies to add some agreed rules that will make sure the market stays competitive, or the third is seek to stop the deal by filing a preliminary injunction in federal court. Now the article here also points out that there could be other things that could cause this deal to hit a snafu. However, the other major caveat is the deal is also being investigated by the Competitive and Markets Authority, the UK's equivalent of the FTC, as well as regulators in other regions. The CMA has set a deadline of September 1st to give its initial decision on the matter, and if it decides the merger should not go ahead for whatever reason, then the deal may not be done. So Microsoft is not quite out of the woods yet, but hopefully we should hear something within the next month as to whether this has gone through or whether it's being held up. Next we have this press release about the announcement of a new studio from NetEase. NetEase Games, the online division of NetEase, is proud to announce Jar of Sparks, a new first party studio that will enjoy full creative freedom as part of NetEase Games. Jar of Sparks is led by Jerry Hook, the former head of design on Halo Infinite, and has a team of industry veterans who have worked on some of the biggest franchises in video game history. Jerry is a pioneer in the game industry and has helped launch the original Xbox as well as a founding member of Xbox Live. He has held executive roles across multiple disciplines for Halo and Destiny franchises, most recently as head of design for Halo Infinite. Now there are also some more notable names joining this team. 
Taken from the middle of this paragraph here, it says CEO and studio head Jerry Hook will be joined by creative director Paul Crocker, who acted as lead narrative director on the Batman Arkham Trilogy and as assistant creative director on Halo Infinite. Executive producer Greg Stone, who worked as producer on Doom 2016 and Halo Infinite, and gameplay director Steve Dyke, who worked both as an animation director and as a design director for many AAA games including SSX franchise, NBA Street franchise, and the Halo franchise. Now we are obviously four or five years away from anything coming out of this studio. And there seems to be a big connection there with all these executives and their work on Halo Infinite. That doesn't necessarily give me a whole lot of hopes. It seems like Halo Infinite came out pretty much unfinished and really didn't seem to have much of a direction. But we'll just have to wait a few years and see what this new studio comes up with. And finally, let's take a look at the games coming to Game Pass for the last half of July. Starting on July 19th, we have As Dusk Falls for Cloud Console and PC, and this is the only day one release in this group. We have Ashes of Singularity, Escalation for PC, and Watch Dogs 2 for Cloud Console and PC. Then on July 21st, we have MotoGP 22 for Cloud Console and PC, Torment Tides of Numera for Cloud and Console, and then on July 29th, we have Inside for Cloud, Console, and PC. And it's worth noting that there have been 12 more games added for touch controls for Xbox Cloud. I'm not going to read through all these here, but you can see in the picture which ones they are. And I thought it was kind of interesting that the Yakuza games have touch controls. Some of the battle mechanics may be a little difficult to use with touch, but I guess it's better than nothing. And of course, with every set of games coming in for the month, we've got some games leaving. So leaving on July 31st, we have Dodgeball Academia, Katamari Damacy Reroll, Luminous Remastered, then we have Omno, Omno, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, and then Raja, an Ancient Epic. Now I haven't played any of these games that are leaving, so if there's any that we should try out, make sure to leave a comment below and let us all know. And that's all we have for today. Did anything we cover catch your attention? Do you have any thoughts as to why it's taking so long for Star Wars Hunters to get brought to the US? And do you think Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard is going to hit any problems? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to thank you for watching and be good.